Welcome back to the Blue Collar DIY channel, y'all. Today, what we're going to talk about is how to tell if your home has foundation problems. Uh, there's a difference between settlement and actual structural movement of your foundation. And today, I'm going to show you some signs of uh, structural movement in a house. Uh, this particular one I worked on two years ago. And so I know it has structural movement and um, I'm going to start showing you a couple things right off the bat. Let's look at the doors. You're going to look at your doors. Maybe you have uh, exit and um, entry doors that are hard to open and close. Some of the times that's just your door out adjustment. Uh, usually structural movement is not just one symptom. Usually it's a uh it's several things together that will tell you you got structural movement so let's look at the top of this door look across here i don't know if you can see it now with the sun coming in let me get a little closer do you see it do you see that this edge right here is hanging lower than this one? okay if you follow this line down you'll say it's pretty tight right here and as we go down it's wider and we got a little gap down there. You can see a little daylight. Okay. Okay. That's, that's one. That doesn't mean that we got structural issues though. There's a lot of homes just got doors out of square. Um, two years ago, there were cracks at the, at the bottom and top of these windows. I fixed them. They didn't come back, but here's another issue. Not necessarily by itself uh, indication. I don't know if you can see that, but this pane of glass, is cracked um, you will have window if you've got structural movement you will have windows and doors that are hard to open now sometimes it's just a crappy window but not always um, again we're we're putting compiling evidence that we got issues okay here's another issue I fixed this paint is see you your trim pulling away Another good indication that you've got movement in the house. Um, let me see if I can find something else. Uh, previous repair. That was a lot worse two years ago when I fixed it. Um, and there was no getting it back flush without major construction. And they just, they decided they just, that was good enough. So let's go follow me. Okay. Um, two years ago, this ceiling was coming down. Actually, the sheetrock was like four inches hanging down. And I came in and I fixed all this. I got it back up, uh, secured it, mud and tape to fix all that. It was a mess. Um, that was a dead giveaway. Um, now, you have one, I have one little spot I'm fixing over there that uh, was... Uh, it, you know the home's moving again and it does it we had I'm fixing these cracks right here we had the ceiling separating from the sheetrock and there was about a quarter to three-eighths gap around there around that corner and back over that side where where the home moved here's another one see the door see how it's uh, the gap is wider over here follow it down now these are new doors two years ago, I put new slabs, put them in, and there was nothing wrong with them. This door won't even, the striker won't even, because it's so far out. That's a, that's a dead giveaway. Um, if I could pull up the carpet, I would show you the cracks, but we're not pulling car carpet up today. Um, and, and you know, again, sometimes your home just settles. Now, I just walked over a little hump in the floor. That's, you know, if you're walking across the floor and you feel a little hump, that's another giveaway. Here's another crack. Okay. There were two years ago, there were cracks, really major cracks around this window. They're all fixed. If you can see, go in a house, if you're looking to buy a house or something, you see where there's been a lot of repairs done uh, to the ceiling. <clears throat> over the, around the windows and doors you know you may want to ask them 
have y'all had any issues with movement let me turn that light on let me see if there's anything in here in this room two years ago when i fixed it the ceiling you can see a little bit this ceiling was coming down as uh, as well but not near as bad as the other one so why everybody thinks we've got to turn the ceiling fans on high in the winter uh sometimes not this one but if you got the big mirrors that are glued to the wall and they crack uh by themselves i mean your kids throwing baseballs at them or something and that's obvious but um that uh you know, if a mirror, big mirror just cracks by itself, it just, they, they always have to have a reason to crack. Um, this door isn't too bad, but it is when this is where the crack runs through this one of them, at least through here, and goes through there. And um, another thing you'll have will be your tile will crack. Not just one, you know, here and there. It will be a crack across all your tile. Um, I've seen a crack in the tile someplace. Like I said, I just walked across another hump where it's kind of bowing up over there. Um, this one's cracking just a little bit. I think these were replaced, if I remember right. So anyway, that's your interior. Uh, what you're looking for on the interior. You're looking where maybe the ceiling's coming apart from the uh, wall. Same way your cabinet doors. If you got cabinet doors that's all wonky, you know um that's an, another another symptom and and then you're you're collecting all these symptoms pretty soon you're going to be able to diagnose here's a good one right here see how these cabinets are coming separating from the ceiling two years ago i had all that fixed and i'm not fixing it now he didn't want it fixed now but two years ago i had all that fixed they were tied to the ceiling and it just keeps happening and if you don't take care of the foundation issues um then that's what's going to happen so let's go outside see if we can find anything that would suggest foundation problems on the outside another thing i do not like to see is trees close to the house because the roots can sap all the moisture uh, from the foundation in one area and the other area you may still have wet or you know more soil uh and as your soil dries out if you've got expansive soils like we do then you can put uh different pressures on your your foundation and cause cause problems uh plus the roots get in there and they can as they grow they can put different pressures on the uh foundation or if they die you have them cut out and the old roots rot and leave a void that that can be bad too this particular tree has a root that got into the sewer ran all the way to the bathroom in the middle of the house and up through the sink um, and, and was causing it to stop up so uh, I just cringe every time I see people with big trees next to their foundation especially in an area with expansive soils so let's see what else we can find now we're looking at the face of the foundation we've got a crack right there we've got a crack over here what this one is is a cold joint that's where two uh different pores happened um these cracks here i'm not worried about they do not appear to be structural it's typical for cement to crack concrete to crack that's what it does uh this one is probably a settling crack you know if that's the only thing i've got it's just that i'm not worried about it uh this home on this side's got uh, vinyl here's another little spider crack there again, I'm not worried about it. What concrete does. Come around here. We've got another crack. You see those? I hope you're getting it. I can't see. I don't have my glasses on. We got another one. Some place in here, I thought. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's just. Oh, there it is. Got another one right in there. Oh, can y'all see that? Okay hard to tell with when you got vinyl siding because the vinyl hides lots of things brick on the other hand brick is your friend if you're looking for foundation issues so anyway let me go around the house see what else i can find
Remember when I told you Brooke's your friend? Look at your garage door jams. If they're separating, I mean, this ain't bad. This is just like a maintenance right here. And I'll cock these. But if they're really separating, again, if you have, say, let's say the uh, bottom is this far apart, and as you go up, it gets more narrow and narrow until the top of it's tight. Now, the indication you've got structural problems. This side's okay, but look how much caulk they've put in at the bottom in the past. And that needs to fill that big, big gap. We've got a little brick on the front. Um, there again, if we've got just a little minor cracks in the brick, I'm not concerned. Right here in the middle. Uh, let me see if I can get down there. I expect to see cracks there, but see where it's come, see how it's coming out of there. Coming out of there. Um, typically, brick wants to crack in the weakest spot, and that's mortar joints. It starts breaking brick, then, then I start getting a little concerned. And I don't think this home's going to show us much on the outside. Um, three sides are vinyl. I do not like vegetation next to the house um, because it hides lots of stuff. Sometimes it even hides intruders. Okay, this, this is uh, coming out right here. Separating just a little bit, but that's usually maintenance issues. I don't see anything else on the outside. Um, Another place to look is up here, the corners of your freeze boards, if they're pulling away. Uh, those aren't too bad. Sometimes your post will get loose. That's not bad. Um, this house only has a two by two entry into the attic, so we'll not be going to the attic looking for stuff. Um, otherwise, I'll show you what to look for now. But those things right there, um, I don't know if you can see, but this lower course of brick, it, it has a crack all the way across. Or again, that can be from just regular settlement. When you've got stair step cracks through your brick, and there again, when one, one end's larger or smaller than the other end, then you start, then you can start um, worrying, um, especially if you've got more than one. Um, I don't know if I can, I had some pictures at one time, um, over some serious foundation issues. I don't know if I can find them or not. Um, you see the gap over here. That's just lack of maintenance, those shutters. But there again, it could be the home from settling and, and causing that to pooch out. But, uh, this instance, I, I don't think so. Right now, I think all these are done is creating a place for wasps make nests where they die this winter another thing is if you've got doors more than one usually more than one that when you open them they want to swing closed by themselves or swing open there again if you just got one it could be your doors out adjustment um, but when you continue to get those time and time again now we're coming back to the kitchen i don't know if you can see it on this video but this floor is not level and it goes down it kind of goes down that way uh, there again comes over there's a little low spot rises just a little bit in here and goes that way um, you could put a four foot level on there and it really wouldn't tell you much um, the high spots right here because homes or slabs are never poured perfectly level it's so it's pretty typical that you would get a slab with just a little bit out but when you start talking quarter inch and four foot that's that's crazy so um these are all indications that you got structural movement um like i said i wish i could pull this carpet up and show you this crack in the slab i may have a picture someplace i just don't know if i can find it um so that's the things to look for Again, here's another door. Good example. Really tight here. Look how much gap there is. And I replaced this door two years ago too. And I had it all squared. And it opened beautifully. Now, well, it wouldn't close. But now, you got to fight with it to get it open. Ooh, the garage. Let's see if there's anything in the garage. I don't think there is. 
Um, I don't remember seeing anything out here. No, I don't see nothing out here really. So that's all indications that you have structural problems. And um, I would typically would tell you to get a hold of a structural engineer independent of a foundation repair company. Uh, because if you get an engineer who works for a foundation repair company, yes, they may be perfectly um, honest, but unfortunately, since foundation repair is a very expensive um, thing, you just can't hardly trust them. So uh, if I'm worried about a home having structural problems, if I'm the home owner, I will be calling a structural engineer who specializes in foundations. Not all structural engineers do. So uh, some will say, oh, we don't, but, but we know what we're looking for. Get one that does. What I'm looking for here, I'm looking on the inside of this closet. And I know y'all can't see but a lot of times people fix their sheetrock and they always forget about the inside of the closet. So if you're concerned you're buying a house or, or you, you're looking for one, um, look inside the closets on, on those walls. So anyway, get you, if you're concerned, get a structural engineer who has experience with foundation repair. Uh, have them come out, pay the money. It'll be fairly expensive. Pay the money, pay the man or woman, and have them um, look at it for you so uh, I'm looking here cabinets really tight up here and as we come down there's big gaps uh, that wasn't there two years ago so anyway folks that's how you can tell if you're dealing with structural problems or just typical settlement homes move that's what they do um, especially if they're on a slab but and it's okay that they do until they start getting excessive and it affects the structure and that's what we're worried about so anyway hey go ahead and questions or anything comments leave them down below i appreciate it Some videos running a little long but i wanted to show you all all this i spent almost 20 years as a home inspector and looking at these things and um now that i'm fixing them it's uh you know i just assume everybody knows this stuff but but not necessarily so Anyway, hey, click like and subscribe down below. Click the bell icon, please. And check out the blog at bluecollardiy.com. Catch you on the next video.